Hey, this video covers lithium battery regulations and standards in the EU. More specifically, we're looking into the battery directive, which restricts substances. Then I move on to the GPSD related EM standards for lithium batteries. And finally, I will also explain how lab testing works when it comes to lithium batteries. All right, so first we have the battery directive, and it's essentially a substance regulation that, uh, at least at, um, at the current time, covers three substances, or three heavy metals, more specifically lead, mercury, and, and also cadmium. And as you can see here, the requirements differ depending on the substance, whereas for lead, there are labeling requirements that apply, while for mercury, and for cadmium, the limit is a hard limit in the sense that the, the battery cannot contain uh, these two substances above the set uh, percentage, as you can see here. Keep in mind that these, these limits may be subject to change and are likely to change in the future. They could also expand the substance list. Let's look into the labeling requirements then of the battery directive. So three primary, let's say, uh, parts that we have to take into consideration. And first is the separate collection symbol, very similar to that of the of we uh, for electronic waste. This one is specific to batteries. The second is that of the substance symbol or the as you can see here, the, the, the chemical symbol or description, such as PB for lead, HD for mercury, and CD for cadmium. And finally, battery capacity. Okay, let's move on to, to GPSD. So where the battery directive is specific to, to substance content, the, the general product safety directive um, it essentially covers safety aspects of all consumer products. And what it states, if you go and you read this, this, this directive on the European uh, Commission website, what you will see is that it's, it serves sort of as a catch-all directive in the sense that if a product or a aspect of a product is not covered by other directives, then the GPSD applies. And at the very core, it states that all consumer products must be safe. Batteries are covered and there are also harmonized standards. I'm not sure if the harmonized standards cover batteries specifically, um, but what it states is that when it comes to ensuring compliance with the GPS, the um, so-called presumption of compliance is, is based on the idea that if you follow the the EN standards, the European standards that are in existence with that product, be they harmonized or non-harmonized, then there's a so-called presumption of compliance. So this is perhaps the most important slide in this presentation. It's, it's listing um, such standards, such as EN 60086-4, um, safety of lithium batteries. And, uh, two other standards that we have here. And I'm not saying that these are necessarily all the ones that are in existence, but when it comes to the safety aspects of, of lithium batteries, you need to identify the corresponding EN standards and keep in mind that it can be more than one that applies. Right, let's move on then. And by the way, you can find, you can find you can find more standards on the, the Senedec website. On uh, there's, there's a number of websites that where you can search and buy EM standards. And this leads me to the next topic, which is that of lab testing. So, third-party lab testing is is often required uh, to verify compliance, both when it comes to safety standards that I just showed you, and also when it comes to substance restrictions. Without third-party testing or should I say lab testing at some stage and by some entity, you do not have any proof of compliance. And especially when it comes to um, lithium batteries, which are high risk products, if I can use that term, that is not, uh, it's, it's practically something that absolutely has to be done. 
before you you import lithium batteries or you import or, or manufacture devices that contain lithium batteries. So question of testing is ultimately, it's a matter of verifying compliance, verifying that your, your product is safe. And the reason the reason third party testing is often required is because not all suppliers can provide test reports or documentation that proves that their lithium battery is designed in compliance with uh, the EN standards that apply or the battery directive. So for that reason, battery testing is something that many of our customers, when it comes to electronics, it's simply something they have to do before they sell in the EU. One question we get quite often related to electronics and batteries is that of using test reports provided by a supplier. And while what's the upside, what's the benefit of using a supplier test report when it comes to lithium batteries? One uh, well, primary is, is, is that you save money. Lab testing is not free. Testing um, lithium batteries could be anything from say a thousand USD and, and up. It can be quite expensive. And for that reason, it's, it, it would, it's ideal if you can get test reports from within your supply chain, if I can, if I can use that term. As I mentioned, the problem is that many suppliers, especially smaller suppliers, they, they cannot provide pre-existing lab test reports. This doesn't necessarily mean that their products are non-compliant, but it could mean that the, the battery, the battery cell is, is non-compliant, that contains substances above the limits. Maybe it's the, the device, including the battery is not designed, is not, does, doesn't comply with the provisions of the various EN standards that, that cover lithium batteries and, and other, other batteries and battery powered devices too. Well, um, the challenge here is, as said, that not all suppliers can provide it, but it doesn't mean that the rate is zero. There are suppliers, um, the, the larger suppliers, the, the, the more established brands of lithium batteries, they can sometimes, well, they can often provide test reports. I shouldn't use the word sometimes. In fact, they can often provide uh, test reports. So what this means is that if you want to rely on pre-existing uh, test reports for lithium batteries, then you simply have to narrow down the list of battery cell suppliers to the very high-end manufacturers. Samsung, TDK, etc. very big brand names. Those companies, we're talking the big Japanese and Korean companies, and um, there might be a few also in mainland China these days, can provide pre-existing test reports and they do testing, they verify compliance with, uh, with, with both the battery directive and the EN standards. In some cases, you can even find test reports available on, on their website. This does come with some challenges. Um, it would be ideal if it was as simple as you just had to tell your supplier that, give me some Samsung batteries and, and you've done with it. The problem is there's a lot of fakes in the supply chain. So if you really want to do this, if you want to rely on pre-existing test reports, you can't just take it as face value and assume that your supplier will buy authentic, uh, say in this case, Samsung lithium batteries. What you need to do is to contact them directly or at, or at the very least an authorized wholesaler, a reseller, well, a uh, B2B reseller, of course, not, not retail, and make sure that you are not just verifying the test report, but you're verifying the supply chain that you know that you, you are procuring batteries from a verifiable source. So it needs that you, you, you have a, a tight grip on your supply chain. That's the only way that you can do this. And if you ask me, I think that's the best approach because it does get expensive to, to test, test uh, batteries all the time, like once a year or yeah, depends on how often you want to do it, right? Or whenever they update the standard. So ideally, you have a, a you're using batteries from a supplier that is producing products that are compliant with EU regulations, and yeah, make sure that you can verify that every batch comes from the, from from that same source. And another comment I want to make is that C marking is 
is often is mandatory for essentially all electronic products in the EU. Didn't bring it up here within the context of lithium batteries because the topic of this video is, is not lithium battery devices primarily, but the, the battery itself. But keep in mind that the CE marking is mandatory for essentially all electronics uh, in the European Union. Okay, so if you have any questions, you can write a comment on YouTube or you can go to our website, compliancegate.com.